Dear brother and sister in Christ, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our second one uh, as answering Father Dawood Lamai uh, regarding the uh, priesthood. In the first episode, just we exposed the deception about the word patriarch that he tried like to uh, uh, convince people that it is actually goes back to the Old Testament and it has a priestly meaning. Uh, in this episode, God willing, we will be covering uh, the very famous term uh, that is the sacrifice of Melchizedek of bread and wine. And we'll see now this is actually is a big deception, even by definition. Uh, so let's watch a short clip, then we come to uh, to explain and expose and refute the allegation. معروف أوله ومش معروف له أب في الكهنوت ما هوش كهنوت متوارس زي إبراهيم وإسحاق ويعقوب وزي بعد كده كهنوت الهاروني ملك صادق النهاردة دلوقتي قدامنا فيه اتنين كهنة في كهن اسمه أبونا إبراهيم يعتبر إيه يعني كهن عن أسرته وفي شخص آخر من كهنوت آخر لكن هذا الكاهن الآخر درجته أرفع أعلى دورينا الدرجات الكهنوتية تاريخ ده ألفين سنة قبل المسيح خبز وخمر في الوقت اللي كل الزبائح نسمع آدم ولا هابيل ولا نوح ولا إبراهيم كله بيقدم زبائح حيوانية إنما ملك الصادق هذا الكاهن الفريد من نوعه يقدم زبيحة خبز وخمر أوكي I'll put an introduction for this so the main point is the uh, sacrifice of Melchizedek of wine and bread, or bread and wine. All right, we'll see if this works or not. In the book of uh, Genesis chapter 4, it says, And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, that is from the animals, but he did not respect Cain and his offering, which was of the fruit of the ground. And the Cain was very angry and his countenance, countenance fell. Okay, so what is the interpretation of these two verses or the, of these few verses? Uh, by Father Tedros and even Father Antonius Fikri. Why the Lord uh, considered or respected one and rejected the other? So, as per their explanation, they said the offering of Cain was from the fruit of the earth or the ground. And this is not capable to do a reconciliation between God and man. But the offering of Abel was uh, uh, a blood sacrifice uh, resembling or pointing to uh, Lord Jesus, the true or the ultimate sacrifice who reconciled us with the Father. So number one, now why it was not one, why the offering of Cain was not accepted because it is from the fruit of the ground. So, now when they say that Melchizedek offered a sacrifice of bread and wine uh, should not be accepted. And even the word sacrifice is not, cannot be applied. It's a self-defeated uh, terminology. We'll see it now. But as, as a start, now we ask... Father Dawood and all those who say that, if the Lord rejected the offering of Cain because it was from the fruit of the ground, then with the same like rule, the Lord should not accept the offering or the sacrifice, if you would like to call it sacrifice, although it is wrong, of Melchizedek because it is from the fruit of the, uh, of the ground. Later on, when Aaron came, 
the Lord gave to Moses or to Aaron, he gave to Moses and Aaron, they were to, together anyway, five offerings or sacrifices. One of them was called the offering of flour. But this is at Aaron time, and it was not called sacrifice, by the way. But before that, no sacrifice or offering was accepted if it is from the ground. And Meshizedek is 500 years before Aaron. So between Abel and Cain up to Aaron, there is no offering from the ground was accepted. Why? Because it does, it, 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 it does not reflect the real meaning of a sacrifice. Okay? So this is number one. Now number two, or the second point, now we come to what is the definition actually of sacrifice and 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 uh, and offering. There is a verse so, uh, in First uh, Samuel chapter three, verse fourteen. You know that uh, Eli, the uh, the priest, was not uh, did not like chasten his sons well, who were actually uh, committing very like offensive uh, sins at the time, and he he did not he was not like a hard liner with them. He was not. Like he was soft with them. Then the Lord said, And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So actually there is a difference between uh, sacrifice and offering. In the Bible there are uh, three uh, different terminologies will go through them. The first one is sacrifice. Even the word sacrifice, you understand, it's, some, it's a slaughter. I went to the Hebrew uh, word and its definition. So sacrifice, this sacrifice in Hebrew, this is strong uh, dictionary, says zibach. If you understand Arabic, even you know zibach means slaughter. Yezbah. And it says it's a slaughter of uh, uh, like uh, a living thing could be animal bird or even a person a human sacrifice so this is so a sacrifice must be something slaughtered and out of it comes like it must bleed must bleed this sacrifice so this means what when they say sacrifice of Melchizedek of bread and wine, this is a self-defeating description. You cannot call it sacrifice. So, bad luck. So when you say, ah, we offer uh, every mass a sacrifice of bread and wine, absolutely wrong. You cannot call it sacrifice. And if Melchizedek did it before Aaron, was not accepted. Okay, I say, I repeat this again. During that period of time, Nothing, nothing offered from the ground was accepted by God. Number two, you cannot call it a sacrifice. It's a self-defeating definition. If you call it a sacrifice, this means it must be a living being slaughtered and bleeding. Animal, bird, human. All right? Second one, offering or oblation. Both two words in Hebrew, one word called mincha. Mincha. Which means, number one, it's a voluntary offering. It is not a mandatory one. And normally it is bloodless. However, you could refer to the sacrifice as oblation or offering. All right? Uh, last definition, uh, burnet offering. And in Hebrew, olo, olo, which means uh, a sacrifice or an offering or oblation that part of it or all of it or part of it is burned on the altar. Okay, so eventually we come to two major sections sacrifices and offering. Sacrifices must be a living, like uh, flesh slaughtered and blood comes out of it. The offering must be. Uh, from uh, not a blood thing, but you, can you call a sacrifice an offering or oblation or burn it? Yes, you can. But for the for the offering, offering itself doesn't have, must not be a blood thing. 
but you can call it uh, burn it offering yes you can if there is a part of it so the conclusion that i would like to come out of is that from the bible the word sacrifice cannot be given to anything that is not bleeding and must be a real bleeding cannot be like a, a hypothetical or a, a, like a metaphorical no 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 it's a real bleeding thing that when you slaughter it and you offer it you might uh, burn it or burn a part of it and consider it as oblation or, or to the lord i'm talking about physical stuff but don't take me and uh, let my uh, hands when i raise them in the evening like sacrifice this is uh, like uh, reflection but we're talking about real stuff mitch Sadek had real stuff this real stuff cannot be called sacrifice now this by that now the point is gone but you still have to continue now now come to this point in fact when the bible says that Melchizedek went out to meet Abraham uh, did actually he make a sacrifice let's read this from the book of Genesis chapter 14 verse 18 then Melchizedek king of Salem or Salem brought out it did it say he offered the sacrifice brought out bread and wine comma he was the priest of the most high like he, they would like to say he was a godly man and he knows the real god but didn't say that he built an altar and offered the sacrifice if he built an altar and offered a sacrifice this should be like a blood sacrifice but it says brought out bread and wine so what does it mean by brought out bread and wine as a start it never mentioned in the bible that when he met him like he built a, a sacri uh, an altar and said uh, this is a sacrifice for whatever for god the most high no it says just brought out this and of course he gave it to abraham and his people they brought out not uh, so is there any Excuse me. So, is there any occasions in the Bible that we can see people offer bread and wine in some occasions? Absolutely. I will take if, like, at least five. One of them is very similar to this one. Let's read this one. That someone will offer bread and wine to some people that they are in a state or a situation of war. We all remember when Absalom rebelled against his dad, David, and he wanted like, to kill him and take the kingdom for himself. We know this story very well in the uh, second book of Samuel. So let's read second book of Samuel, uh, chapter 16. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, he was escaping with some of his own people, that the loyal people with him, and they were in the wilderness, while Absalom is like chasing them to kill his dad and to take the, the kingdom for himself by force. So what happened? There was Ziba. Ziba was actually a loyal servant to David, but he was not in the war with him. But he knew that David went with uh, his uh, army and they escaped, they left Jerusalem and they are in the wilderness escaping from Absalom, who had also plenty of, of people behind him as army. So Ziba went, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him a couple of, sad, uh, sorry, he met him with a couple of saddle donkeys, okay, and on them huh, 200 loaves of bread, 100 clusters of raisin, 100 uh, summer fruits, uh, so, yes, yeah, summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, what do you mean to do this with these? So Ziba said, the donkeys are for the king for the king's house to ride on the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat and the wine 
for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Now my question is, was the offering a sacrifice when he took the bread and wine to David? Of course not. He was taking this stuff to support David and his people to refresh them in their escape and in this distressful time that they go through. So exactly, so what happened? Melchizedek took bread and wine to meet Abraham and those people coming from like a dreadful war and the one to, get, to refresh them, to give them some food. He brought out bread and wine for those people, like to support them to like, definitely they are coming back like very exhausted and tired from the war. It was a big war, by the way. Uh, so, uh, it, 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 see, this is what happened, like, like, like this situation. Okay, take another example. Bread and wine, people used to carry it when they traveling. You remember the Samaritan man? The good Samaritan in the book of Luke chapter 10? He was carry, carrying wine and oil and definitely he had also some bread. So people used to carry this for their own and it could be also entertaining other people. Also, we'll take some examples that it was for celebrating uh, good occasions. Uh, you remember Hannah, the mom of Samuel? Uh, after three years, she went to fulfill her promise that if you give me a, a, a child, a male child, I'll offer it to him, to you as a servant. So what happened when the child was three years old? In the book of Samuel chapter 1, verse 24, now, when she, this is Hannah, had weaned him, this is Samuel, the child, she took him up with her with three bulls, uh -huh, one ifa of flour, uh -huh, here we go, this is like uh, the bread, and a skin of wine. And they brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. So she went to celebrate offering her son, as a, a servant to the Lord, thanking the Lord for the child, responding to her prayer, and now fulfilling her promise that I will give it to you, Lord, to serve you all his life. And she wants to celebrate this, of course, with joy. So she took with her like a bull, uh, like a few bulls and bread and wine. So what, can we call this the sacrifice of Hannah? One more. Uh, you remember Abigail, the good lady, the wise lady, and her husband uh, named Nabal, he was like not a wise person. And the, it, there was a problem between David and Nabal, and David was like furious. Now, uh, Abigail wanted to cool uh, David down, and she said like uh, he deserved like to share something of the celebration of the harvest. So what happened? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 25, if you don't know the story, you can read it in this chapter so you know the story in full. Anyway, then Abigail made haste and he took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep and some other stuff, and gave them to David and his people. That was a celebration of the harvest time. So was Abigail offering a sacrifice when she went to, the, to meet David? and his people and give them bread and wine. I wanted from these examples, one more example, by the way. <clears throat> you remember when Saul was at, rejected by God and uh, he was attacked by the, uh, uh, the evil spirit, then the people advised him, let's seek a person who can play music and chant some prayers that when you are attacked by this evil spirit, uh, when he plays, then it will cool you down. Then they said, ah, here, is, here we go. There is a guy, young boy, named David, and he is really a good guy, and he is a good uh, singer, and he is, he is uh, like a good musician. musician. Then what happened? Saul, the king, sent to Jesse, dad of David, or David's dad, and he told him, I need your son like, to be my musician. So what the Bible says, in the book of First Samuel chapter 16, verse 20, And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, 
and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. So like it was some sort of entertaining like, okay, well, my son will be working with uh, like uh, for you. Okay, I'm sending also like a prison. You understand? So was also this uh, a sacrifice uh, by Jesse to, of course not. From all these examples, there is more, by the way, that I, I, this is good enough. But I'm very happy that I found one in the Bible that also had the same theme of war. So by having all this to show that when Melchizedek went up or went out to meet Abraham at this particular time, coming out or coming back from the war, it was exactly to refresh those people with bread and wine. So this was very common practice that people... Like if someone uh, like invites you for a dinner or uh, something like that, what normally do? Uh, yes, you're going to a dinner, but normally you don't go empty-handed. You take anything with you, anything, all right? Yeah, so it could be some sweet, some flour, anything, all right? Or, or, or a, 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 a plate of whatever. So it, it is very common practice like that, all right? So what happened is, number one, you cannot say this sacrifice. This is self-defeating description. Number two, if it is sacrificed, will not be accepted. Number three, that is, it's a common practice at that time that people, uh, they refresh each other by bread and wine. Make sense? Okay, last thing. The whole deception about uh, stressing, uh, you are the uh, yeah, priest forever on the, to the order of Melchizedek is, this is the interpretation. This is, uh, you will offer about Jesus, uh, a sacrifice of uh, uh, wine and bread. In fact, is has Jesus offered a sacrifice of, of, of bread and wine? Of course not. Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as a true sacrifice. He was slain on the cross. Blood came out of him. But the, blood, but the bread and wine that he, he offered the, the evening of that day, like, uh, whatever we call the Last Supper, he offered when he broke, he celebrated with uh, the twelve, he celebrated the Passover, the new Passover, by saying, he, when he broke the bread, he said, this is my body that will be broken, that it will be broken tomorrow, that will be broken. And when he gave them, then they are, uh, the chalice of wine, and this is my blood for the new of the New Testament that will be shed for will be shed tomorrow. But whatever Jesus offered on that night was not a sacrifice; it was for the remembrance of what is going to physically to happen. So, in fact, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was the following day on the cross. So we cannot they, we cannot say Jesus offered a sacrifice. Even the word cannot. It, it is self-defeated. A sacrifice must have blood. Must have real blood. Don't say, ah, oh, the wine represents the blood. No, this is not true. Yeah. It, it, I'm not, that's not true uh, to, to define it as a sacrifice. Sacrifice means, by definition, must be a slaughter of something and bring blood out of it. Real blood, not a metaphorical thing. I would like to stop here for a tick. I might be like derailing a little bit. Lord Jesus Christ actually is a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the whole world. This sacrifice of atonement normally is done or offered on the day of atonement, not on the day of uh, Passover. Okay, But in fact, Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as atonement, but on the season of Passover. Why is that, by the way? Right? Why is that? Because... The, the, the uh, Passover actually is a celebration. It's not for the forgiveness of sins. You remember people came out from Egypt. Uh, when they put the, uh, uh, the blood on their houses, it was not for the sacrifice, for the forgiveness of sins, but just to uh, make sure that the, death, the angel of death will not enter this house. All right? And they do it every year as a sacrifice. As it is a sacrifice because they must get like a lamb and uh, like slaughter it. But it is not for forgiveness of sins. 
but it is for the celebration of salvation that happened to them in Egypt. So in fact, the Lord just put two things together. He offered himself as atonement sacrifice, which should be only uh, done once, as we'll see next episode, and by the high priest, which is Jesus Christ, the ultimate high priest. But he wanted us to celebrate, not to offer a sacrifice for forgiveness of sin, sins, but we celebrate our salvation. That's why he did it in uh, the time of uh, Passover. All right. And the main thing is the Passover celebration does not need a priest. So when we celebrate our uh, salvation, we break the bread and we do not need a priest. Make sense? Yeah, can you understand this or shall I repeat it again? I repeat it quickly again. The Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as atonement sacrifice at the time of the Passover. And by the way, there is a, uh, a verse in the Bible uh, in one of the epistles. I can't remember what epistle at the moment. It says, uh, but Jesus Christ offered himself. Yeah, but Jesus Christ is our Passover slaughtered for us. So, the Bible says very clearly that Jesus is our Passover and Passover sacrifice does not need a priest to offer it. This means what? Whenever you celebrate the Passover, the true Passover of Jesus Christ, you don't need a priest. And it is not a sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. It is a celebration of the salvation, exactly like what happened during that time, I mean, the coming out of Egypt. So, uh, I wanted to give you this as a side thing, uh, like to think about it. Now, let me summarize the uh, episode. Number one, till the time of Moses, any offering from the ground was not accepted. The offering of Cain was not accepted. Accordingly, if Melchizedek was offering from the ground of the fruit, will not be accepted. But he was not definitely offering uh, as a, 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 I cannot say it's a sacrifice. He was not offering anything from the fruit. Uh, this is absolutely like when you try to do this, this is a deception for people with the uh, uh, ultimate target. You would like to convince them uh, what we're doing in the church is the right thing. And Jesus offered uh, a sacrifice like that. No, it is not. Number two, there is nothing called sacrifice from the fruit of the uh, earth. Uh, it is self-defeating definition. Sacrifice must uh, it must be uh, like a living being slaughtered and blood comes out of it. Number three, whatever Melchizedek offered to Abraham and his people was to refresh them was not a sacrifice at all. Uh, similar to what Ziba actually did later on. Uh, number four and last one, the Lord Jesus Christ did not offer a sacrifice from bread and wine. He offered himself as atonement sacrifice on the cross and blood by blood, but we say celebrate it uh, as a Passover, so we don't need a priest. Uh, now, so what is the real definition or explanation of the verse, uh, the Lord has sworn and will not relent that you are the priest to the order of Melchizedek. What is the real one? God willing, this will be the next episode. Till then, may the Lord bless you. Don't forget to pray for the service for me and for uh, like the episodes and like to be anointed and to be a blessing for everyone. God bless you.